old Nintendo gamer. And son. March the 3rd, 2017 it was a very important day in our lives, boys. <laughs> Our little baby is now four years old and running around the shop. It's uh, the Switch's fourth year. So it's four years old. Now it's push. It's his fifth year. It's pushing into, uh, well, it's, it's past. It's half waypoint, I should imagine, mm -hmm. with a, a usual console life cycle of five to seven kind of years. Um, happy birthday. Any? I, any got, I, I got mine a day late. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Did you? March the 4th. I got, uh, cheekily, I got mine a day early <laughs> on March the 2nd. And I got mine on March the 3rd. Bang hey. on. Bang on schedule from game in Bolton at midnight. We uh, add us all up together. We are the average. Uh, congratulations, Nintendo. You've made a wonderful console that continues to sell. Is it going to remain selling as well as it has, Nick? If they upgrade and release an upgrade model, yes. Greg? Uh, well, it's obviously going to tail off at some point, but I I don't see it being this year, actually. I mean, like, mm. the supply for like PS5 and Xbox is still not really there. And people just still seem to be picking up the Switch. So My brother, who is a, a sole PS um, player, I don't think he's picked up a PS5 yet. Um, he's always been on PS4, PS3, everything before it. Yes, he just picked up a Switch a couple of um, months and a half back. Oh. Very so good. there's, you know, there's people like that who have been a bit late to ad adopt it are looking all, all the kind of backlog on there now and thinking, yeah, now's a good time. That's great. But uh, is it a good time? Because there is a Bloomberg report which uh, had to come out. They came up with the report about six months ago, which was very, very similar. But now this seems more substantial because they're saying that Nintendo have equipped um, and uh, done contracts with Samsung to get an OLED display on the Switch, which will be a larger 7-inch um, display, still at 720p, which is no problem for me. I've heard some people say, oh, why didn't they go up to 1080? Um, 720p is fine on such a small screen anyway. Um, with this OLED panel, it's got far better contrast and uses less battery power as well. So it's a win-win for uh, Nintendo there if they can obtain enough um, units of those um, screens. But there's also then talk of that 4K DSL, L, um, DLSS, DSL, yeah, yeah, from the NVIDIA chip, which is AI upscaling. So it had nothing to do with the kind of hardware push in tech there to get a 4K um, when it's docked, of course. And Nick, I'll let you carry on. Is is this something you're looking forward to? This will, by the end, by the way, will be towards the latter end of the year. Yeah, um, I've actually heard it might be early next year from another person who seems to be fairly in the know um, that production's starting in July and that probably is going to be five to six months before it hits the shops if we go on previous news and release dates because the Switch also went into production. Switch Lite went into production five months before it released. So we might be looking at November, December, or maybe early next year. Samsung reckon they can push out a, just under a million screens mm -hmm. in a month. So if it takes about five months of productions, they're going to be sitting on a backlog of five million. Which would worry me, because that's not enough, <laughs> <laughs> I think. Especially if it launches with uh, Zelda, Mario, Mario Kart 9. It's going to be a big issue, I think. Similar to what we've seen with PlayStation 5 and Xbox, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think it would be great if it can upscale on the TV. I think 720p for the handheld is absolutely fine because your eyes really can't tell that much of a difference. And I think it's not worth the um, sort of extra impact on the battery to have a, a 1080p screen because it's going to be at least 25 to 30% more battery draining to have that uh, 1080p screen so i think yeah 720p is fine oled will make it look a lot nicer than it does now definitely and the only thing i'm curious about and i don't know when or if we'll get any confirmation is how the dock's going to work whether there is going to be some tech in the dock which which boosts it even further up to 4k 
for the TV. And I have a feeling, well, what, what I've heard is that Nintendo are obviously not going to release any exclusive games for the new Switch. That everything's going to be fully compatible with all Switches. But that third parties are very interested in the new Switch. And that there are some games already in development f- exclusively for the new Switch. So I guess we'll see. I think this I think this is a good move for now for third parties and also to make Nintendo games look a little bit nicer. I mean, generally, apart from Hyrule Warriors and Yoshi's Crafted World, usually Nintendo games run very smoothly and have an art style which doesn't make you look at it and think, oh, that's ugly. So I think for them, it's not much of an issue at the minute, but I think it's definitely going to help some more third parties get on board and release something. Because we've not really seen much, have we, outside of like the first couple of years. I think Doom Eternal's been the last big one. But I think with the PS5 and Xbox coming out, that's going to drop off massively. Unless Nintendo do something. And it looks like this is what they're doing. So, fingers crossed. We'll see. Yeah, my fingers are crossed. Greg, anything to add? Um, I mean, I, I'm fine with it, I guess. Like, in a way, like... I suppose we would all love like some really high end like monster of a console <laughs> like but I mean at some point like you have to look at it like you can't just like negate the current switch owners <laughs> and go for something that hmm. that means that games can't really like perform on the current switch so like I completely understand um and like you say about the screen there that you don't really notice, wouldn't really notice a difference at that that size. Um, that, I mean that's probably true. Like I've been playing Captain Toad this week, which I'll I'll talk about later, and I've actually been really surprised by how blurry it is, mm-hmm. and it is seven twenty p, on in, in handheld. So I'm not really sure if that's just like a, <laughs> a specific case or something, but it just it just does not look quite right. Um. So in a way, I would like like a, a better screen, but then I like I understand it. Um, so yeah, like a, a bigger screen, I probably probably will get one. Like if it's if uh, it seems worth it, um, especially if it's got like the four K upscale and stuff. Yeah, not much else to say other than that. Get your pre-orders in. If there's only going to be five million of them, we're going to be uh, scrapping for them in the shops <laughs> when they drop. Turok 2 Seeds of Evil got that multiplayer, online multiplayer update, and we were, this is just a little shout out as well, um, as well as Nick said, oh, you've got it on PC, was that right, Nick? Mm-hmm. And they're basically supporting cross-platform play, which is a good thing. Right now, the update went straight live, and uh, Switch and PS4 automatically had cross-platform play. Uh, the developer, not the developers, the porters, basically. I've forgotten their name of the porters. I didn't write it down. They will be adding in PC, Night Dive Studios. They will be adding in PC and Xbox uh, cross-platform play as well at a later date. They haven't specifically said when, but I shouldn't uh, imagine we'd be held uh, waiting for that for too long, Nick. So there is a potential there for, I haven't bought it myself, uh, to Rock 2, but um, if I do, we could get online and have a session. Yeah, definitely. I'd be up for that. Um, I've not actually started it. Yeah, I've been playing Torok 1 mostly. I have I think I'm on like the third third level or something like that. I've just been going through it slowly. Um, it's so good on PC. Blisteringly fast. 4K, 60 frames a second. Like it is, I mean, it's an N64 game, but it still looks it looks amazing. So I'll be keen to play Torok 2 because I always hated that on the 64. I thought it ran really badly. So I never really got into it, but... Once I finish the first game, I'll definitely be up for going through the campaign and definitely up for playing online. Have they dropped the fog back in the first game so you can significantly see much further than you could in the original one? You can, yeah. It's def- yeah. You can definitely see further than you can in the N64 game, but there's still there's still a fog and you can still see the graphics drawing. Like, yeah. you know what I mean, in the distance when you yeah. when you have like a big open space or something like that. So it's, it's fine. Like, it's an old school game and it doesn't really bother me, to be honest. Turok 2 online with us, Greg. Yeah, let's do it. Did you purchase? You, did you get the second one? No, I, I no. will. Like, I, I know it was on sale a few months ago, um, and I sort of considered it, but I wasn't really in the mood for it then, so I didn't get it. So if it goes on sale again, then I think I, I maybe will this time. 
I want to play um, Duke Nukem 3D World Tour online because they got the co-op uh, campaign there as well online. Which uh, if uh, if you boys pick that up, because that was really yeah. cheap. Oh, you got it. Uh, yeah. We'd have to try that Let's as well. Try it, yeah. Yeah, I'll record that if you if you're up for that as well. Good. <laughs> um, coronavirus pandemic. Apparently, last week um, the news came out that E3 was still happening. And I said, oh, this is because they're doing some digital events and all that. And there was no, when when this news came out, there was no mention of them doing any kind of live thing. In fact, they kind of said, ah, we're still thinking about a live thing because of coronavirus. Well, it comes out now, the um, Board of Los Angeles Convention and Tourism Development Commission have stated that E3 2021 live event has been cancelled. Um, before the ESA, that's the group of uh, conglomerate of um, developers who charge for their access to use E3's systems, had even said they were going to do a live event. Um, I'm surprised they even tried to get a live event going there, Greg. Yeah, for me, like a live event's never going to happen at that that at that stage of the year. Like, um, I think even later in the year, I'd be I'd be cautious, like, but um, yeah. I I just expect a digital event, and that's probably what we'll get anyway. Yeah, and and things seem to be going ahead with E three's digital event, but there there's still all these little digital events like uh, the new Expo Game Plus and and all these other bits and pieces that uh, from E three's failure last year to uh, uh, show itself, uh, they're still happening. Is that going to impact E three at all, Nick? I don't know. Um. I have no interest in watching an E3 live event, and I think they had absolutely no chance of it happening in California anyway, so I think it was a bit silly to announce it. Maybe they would have more of a chance somewhere else, um, but definitely not in California. And I think, yeah, these smaller events, especially if companies are going to do their own thing rather than go to E3, it's not going to be that great. I think Sony and Nintendo, as I said last week, I don't think they'll be there, so I think it's basically going to be Microsoft and maybe Ubisoft, but they might do their own thing as well. And I remember Indies, reading, maybe I remember reading the ESA's charging companies a hundred thousand dollars to yeah, to yeah, be part of the show. Yeah. So just host your own show, then. Like, why would you pay a hundred thousand dollars just to stream something online? All right, if you're going to be there in person, that's different. But yeah, it's not going to be a big thing. I think come come summer. Oh, we said it last year, the death of E3. Maybe they're hanging on by the threads there. <laughs> Animal Crossing New Horizons, have you both got it? Did you try out the new update, which has added in Mar- Super Mario Brothers uh, paraphernalia, Nick? I, I've updated it and I've been playing the game, but I haven't even yeah. seen the Mario stuff. Wow. It's I, in Nook Shopping. You have to specifically go and look for it. I've it? just been yeah. doing my daily things and going into the shop and I've not seen any Mario stuff, but I'll check out the catalogue later today. And get some get a warp pipe actually, so I definitely can, get so some more. Yeah, move around the island easily. Greg, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you can warp pipe out of Animal Crossing and into something else. <laughs> Piped out a long time ago. <laughs> And then uh, we had, well, I had hopes. I think uh, me and Nick sat down for a kind of um, year future look towards 2021. And I said, um, I don't think Nintendo are going to stick to that March 31st date uh, to finish Super Mario Bros. 35 and Super Mario 3D All-Stars off. Well, the Japanese official Nintendo Twitter account sent out a tweet last week basically saying... It's still happening. Watch out. These games are going to be removed March the 31st. Uh, Why why are they doing that, Greg? (laughs) (laughs) I still have no idea. But I'm kind of glad that I have it now. I don't really have to to worry about it. There's been a bit of chat about Super Mario Sunshine on the forum there the last couple of days. And I'm actually getting in the mood for it now. Like, I'm ready. Is it still sealed? It is still sealed, but it's... I'm mentally unsealing it. <laughs> Worth a fortune. Keep it sealed. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, how about you? Uh, kind of. I guess we can. We can't really say it's a surprise. I mean, this is what they said they would do. Yeah. I need to go. I need to go through uh, Super Mario Bros. Thirty Five because I've still not won a game in that. So I would like to win a game before it disappears. It's all right. Like I do. I do think it's okay. Tetris Ninety Nine is better, in my opinion, but. 
I, I was playing actually i was playing it on friday and saturday a little bit super mario 35 and i did enjoy it quite a lot um it is once you get down to the sort of the last sort of six five five or six players it gets pretty tense because you know there's so much stuff happening there's enemies coming from everywhere and one small mistake is is you basically so yeah i need to get back into that and maybe in the 36th anniversary they'll they'll have it on sale for a month or something <laughs> and everyone's going to be rushing to buy it who missed out definitely they'll bring it back for the 40th anniversary probably with mario galaxy 2 this time so yeah i think yeah it's, it's it'll disappear but it'll definitely be back at some point 3d you did great. surmise that because it was kind of why well, I, I i was thinking that that's a massive game super mario 3d all-stars to be taken off the eShop and mm. never to return. It's got to be coming back in some sort of form. I think it will. Maybe we'll see them released individually. Yeah. With Mario with Mario Quite Galaxy possibly. 2 as well. They might have some hub program that... Because um, it wasn't there some talk that it is some, in the code there was one game missing which could be added in later. Uh, maybe they'll put all the Mario games in some sort of hub that you can purchase individually or as a bundle or something like that. That might be a, a workaround. To be honest, I see it as them just selling their experiments with their with emulation. Like they just sat down and thought, okay, let's try and emulate an N sixty four game, GameCube game, and a Wii game. And then when they realised it worked, we, like, we could probably sell this. And then yeah, later, we we'll, we'll maybe will get some N sixty four games, GameCube games, Wii games. Would be very nice. Would be very nice. Definitely. Especially those N64 ones, please, Greg. Uh, there's a few a few GameCube ones I fancy, to be honest. How about Wii U games? Oh, we got Wii U games on the Switch. But <laughs> if you did have a Wii U, they've updated it to version 5.5.5. That's the firmware has gone up for further system of stability, basically. Um, that's the first time in about a year and a half that the Wii U has seen an update. They haven't forgotten it, Nick. I just I don't know why they've done this. Maybe someone's figured out a new hack. Yeah, and that's why. I, I I don't know why they would care though. There's 13 million of them out there. They're not going to be losing any money. I think they're not going to sell any Wii U games. They're already all on Switch anyway. So yeah, it's weird. Updated your Wii U, Greg? I assume it's done it automatically because it's it's always plugged in. <laughs> True. I haven't seen my orange <laughs> light come on though, but it must have done it uh, one night. <laughs> uh, moving on to BAFTA, that's the British Academy uh, Film Awards, but this one is uh, Bagger, the British Academy <laughs> Games Awards. I just made that acronym up. Thank you, BAFTA. I will take my uh, revenue later. It's the 2021 Bagger Awards, and. Um, Nintendo are nominated in a few categories, but for exactly the same game all the way through the entirety of the awards. Animal Crossing New Horizons has been nominated in the best game, the best family game, the game beyond entertainment, the best game design, the best multiplayer game, and the EE game of the year, which is a public vote. Um, Everything else that Nintendo did, there's a few, you know, um, indie games and all that that pop up on the Switch, which... uh, Notable Fall Guys will be coming, Minecraft Dungeons, stuff like that. But um, anything Nintendo going to be picking up for Animal Crossing in the baggers, Greg? Oh, I, I couldn't care less, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> March 25th there for the baggers, Nick. Family game, that's it. Everything else they'll lose. <laughs> yeah, family game is theirs. Uh, game Beyond Entertainment. Wow was beyond entertainment march 25th like i say so we'll move on to fall guys ultimate knockout which i just briefly mentioned media tonic are the developers for that game they've been purchased and acquired fully by epic games congratulations epic you've got another um game developer under your belt um what's good news however is that uh, media tonic say they're going to be continuing on putting season passes and bits and pieces and season implements and updates throughout uh, Fall Guys for the foreseeable future. And because of Epic buying them and putting um, a better system in the background, they'll be able, this is what they say, to link it to an account system, obviously the Epic account system. (laughs) They'll be able to implement cross-platform play, which is basically what's needed when it does come to the Switch, because it still is coming to the Switch, and some squad versus squads mods for the future. 
Um, I, if uh, yes, we're not all happy about uh, Epic Games buying them, but the implementation there of some cross-platform play is a is is a win for everybody, Nick. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> if this requires an account to play, like Rocket League did, then it's getting deleted. I'll forget about it. I I think it's all right. Like I enjoyed the three or four hours I played with it. I could stick it on occasionally and have fun for twenty minutes. I think it's a pretty unique game, to be honest. And I know Greg doesn't really like it and doesn't like the controls, and I kind of see his point, but I think for 20 minutes it's fine. But yeah, if Epic want my account or want me to make an account to play it, then it's gone in the bin. This, Greg, seems with Epic buying them, as with um, Rocket League and everything like that, this could make Fall Guys a free-to-play game in the future. It feels like it, it could be a free-to-play game, but like what... I sort of wonder what you would purchase. Season passes and skins, like the, the outfits. Yeah, season stuff. pass, yeah. It's all yeah, all about the bling. Yeah, I mean, because like you can't like purchase stuff to like improve your character and stuff because that would make it unfair, obviously. So I don't know. Like it's epic purchasing them doesn't really encourage me to pick up the the Switch version in addition to the PS4 version, but I probably wasn't going to get it anyway. <laughs> I think I'll be sitting on it until they do announce the kind of free-to-play um, version and just, just wait and see. Uh, a warning for everybody there as it comes to the Switch. Super Nintendo World, yes, is going to be opening in Japan. We have no dates on that. But how about Orlando, Florida? It seems that the Orange County Mayor, Jerry Demings, has said that because of the coronavirus uh, and co- contractor teams being relocalized, it seems as if it won't be coming until 2025. That's a heck of a considerable wait there for um, America to get their own Nintendo World, Nick. Yeah, I don't know. I I think it would be better to go in Japan, but it's good, I suppose, if they're building it in Florida. There's plenty of theme parks there, so... They got the space. Yeah. Could be a, a bigger and better experience in America, Greg. Yeah, I mean, 2025 signs, like, a long way away, but in, in reality, I'll, I'll be here in no time, like... Mm-hmm. We're all getting old. Time speeds up. <laughs> <laughs> and the big news of this week was the Super Smash Brothers presentation for Pyro and Mithra by the director Masahiro Sakurai. You've already purchased this um, season two pass, volume two rather. Nick, mm-hmm. yeah, um, right. have you tried Pyro and Mithra out? I have, yeah. I've uh, been playing Smash Brothers quite a lot over the past couple of days and I've gone through and done all the DLC spirit uh, battles which a couple of them were really, really well done. There was one, the one of the Minecraft ones was fighting against, uh, there's an enemy in Minecraft called a creeper. You know, you probably know what I'm talking about. The one that explodes like a, when yeah, you go near explodes, it. Sneaks up behind you. So it was a lot yeah. of green Kirbys with those um, bombs that you could hold and then they explode. That was that was quite tricky actually, but it was, it was very cool. Um, not that keen, to be honest, on Pyra and Mithra. Definitely not that keen on Mithra. Um, I can't really seem to get my head around her, her combat style. Like Glenn I said on the forum that she's very combo heavy. Uh, that's why she, he likes her, but I'm not, I'm useless at combos on, on, uh, Smash Brothers. I mean, Pyra's okay. She's got some nice, um, like strong attacks, ranged attacks as well. A couple of nice ranged attacks, but it is like, to me, he's just another anime sword fighter. Like <laughs> I do prefer the characters that are a little bit more unique, um, but it's nice. The music, finally, we have some really, really good Xenoblade music in Smash. The level's okay. Um, and the spirit battles also are pretty fun. But, yeah, um, decent character. I think fairly run-of-the-mill, it seems. I know she can, like, change between the two of them, but it, the actual sort of attacks and specials seem fairly standard for smash brothers there's nothing sort of out of the ordinary there like with there was with steve for example um but yeah it's okay nothing really else to say yeah because Py- pyra's more powerful isn't she and mm-hmm. does more damage with a single attack but mithra's the kind of speed demon mm-hmm. isn't she she's much quicker um i i the the gramps you know um azurda the the what the 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 titan that the, mm-hmm. the stage is based on um from Xenoblade chronicles 2 it, it's quite compact as well and it's a very small mm-hmm. stage to yeah. be honest yeah it's okay uh, some of the other dlc stages i think have been a bit better 
to be honest, so far that at least what I've played. Um, so you got nineteen uh, songs from Xenoblade Chronicles Two now in total, and there's about twenty seven from Xenoblade as as a series on there. So there's a nice choice of selection of music, like Nick said there. And then you can also get uh, Me Fighters. I don't know if you purchased it, any of these. Arthur from uh, Ghosts and Goblins is there. There's also something from Monster Hunter, the Rathalos armor and helm, the Hunter armor and helm, and a uh, palico kind of hat as well to make you dress up like a cat. Steer clear of those seventy pence a pop. There, I didn't. I didn't even see. I didn't actually have time to watch the presentation, so I just did the update and then started the game. I didn't even see what had been announced as the DLC, um, me fighters, but none of that really appeals to me. I, mean, I think Arthur's pretty interesting. Bit left field. Well, if but... you if you also get to the eShop, there mm-hmm. is uh, a Spirit Set One for free. You can I downloaded download that. as long as you're a Nintendo. That. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and it gives you one Legend class support and one randomly Ace class primary. They're both random, and then you, you just get uh, added one of those to your roster mm-hmm. of um, spirits. Greg, have you been trying Smash Brothers out? You like me? Haven't. Yeah, <laughs> like me. I have not bought the DLC, and I probably won't. Damn shame. So we move on to a couple of things that Greg will be excited about. And I'm asking Greg first about this. Uh, the New Game Plus Expo happened. There's like about 25 uh, indie games shown on there. But just before it dropped, No More Heroes 1 and 2 are arriving as physical bundles. Um, they come with lots and lots of collectibles. And if you purchase both packs from Limited Run Games, you'll get a replica Santa Destroy flag. <laughs> You got room to display that uh, no more heroes <laughs> flag behind you, Greg. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, this is good for the people that want it. Like, it's, it's not something I'm excited about. Like, I'll purchase both games digitally. Like, I've already got the first one, so I'll get the second one in the shop as well. But I mean, a wee bit of pseudo fifty one love is not not the worst thing in the world. Like, especially if it gets Killer Seven on the Switch at some point. <laughs> Ah, we'll be talking about something that um, is happening with Suda again. Nick, anything about No More Heroes physical editions for you? No, I don't. I'm not really into these sort of indie games as physical, to be honest. I think it's cool for the people who want it. I know Smeagol's getting quite a few of the indie games in special editions. Um, but I, yeah, like Greg, I'm happy with the digital version. I've got one beating it. And I'm kind of torn like I do really want to play two and I don't want to wait too long for a sale so I might actually just get it at full price eventually Um, because I want to beat that and Travis Strikes Again before uh, No More Heroes 3 comes out Travis Strikes Again must have reduced in price on Steam though I've got it physical Ah, for the Switch yeah I picked picked it up can't remember when I think I picked it up a couple of years ago I found it cheap on uh, Shop 2 I think when I was back home is it worth playing uh, it's very different from the from the main games. It's more of a sort of top down Diablo. Actually, we were talking about Diablo before the yeah. uh, before we started it's recording. Important. Very similar in a way because it's just that perspective, and you know you're going through hordes of enemies. But obviously, I mean, it's not like Diablo, but it it has that sort of vibe to it. It's all right. So mode uh, Suda Five One love in that the silver case 2425 which packs in two games we talked about this quite a long time ago actually because it was coming to japan and we surmised that it would come to the west sometime or at least hoped uh the two games are the silver case and the 25th ward the silver case they are coming west on july the 6th um some old school kind of classic investigation kind of games there more um text heavy based nick never heard of them to be honest <laughs> They look very esoterically Japanese, Greg. Yeah, I remember seeing it on the, must have been the PS3 or the PS4 at some point over the last few years, and I sort of like considered it because it was Suda51, but his track record hasn't been yeah. stellar. Like, I mean, Killer7 was, that's the one that sort of introduced me to Suda51, Suda and like, I absolutely loved it. And then No More Heroes was like, guys, ah, really good as well. But some of the other games I've played, like, Killer is Dead, not really. Not great. And then there's one on the DS, Flower, Sun, and Moon. Mm-hmm. Or no, Flower, Sun, and Rain, maybe it's called. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah Flower, Sun, and Rain. And it's it's not brilliant. Like, <laughs> Yeah, these these don't fill me with confidence, but it, 
it's for fans of the games and it's fan fans of Suda Five One there. Um, and then there were two um, indie creates uh, bits and pieces which kind of finished out this in the indie Expo Plus. And uh, one of them was a Zua Striker Gun Vault Three, which people have been clamoring for because it was announced back in twenty twenty last year. It's been delayed basically and held now until twenty twenty two. So there's no, that's not coming out anytime soon. But what is coming out soon on July the twenty ninth? I don't know if you have any affinity to any of these games, Nick, but Blaster Master Zero Three is coming. And if you're in Japan, you'll be able to get the trilogy bundle of Blaster Master Zero, One, Two, and Three all in a physical collection as well. Yeah, I've got the first one. I got it uh, just after. I thought you did. Yeah, because I think it launched actually with the Switch on day one. I could be wrong. It might have been just after the Switch launched. I put about seven hours into it and I didn't quite get to the end of it, but I did enjoy it. Um, especially the levels where you're not in the car and you're sort of walking around. The sort of little dungeon levels, I suppose. They were pretty cool. Got the second one on sale, but I haven't started it yet, obviously, because I haven't finished the first. And the the trailer looks decent for this. It looks like there's a few new mechanics, so... There's this isometric area mm-hmm. as well, like a top-down, like a Diablo kind of thing again, you know, which, which adds uh, a different perspective to the game by the looks of it. Will be maybe looking at how much this is and i'll probably get it if it's a decent price to complete the trilogy craig blaster master three blaster master zero three i've never played them but i mean they must have their fans if they're onto the third one now yeah wasn't it hot and a couple of the boys on the forums are going come on and they were uh super hyped for this so i don't even click on the thread <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to a tiny bit of sales data for the UK, and this kind of sums up a little bit of what we knew with some actual numbers. And it's uh, how many switches got sold throughout the 2020 in the UK. And it seems that it was one point over 1.5 million units. And if you compare it to 2019, that's um, over a million more units sold between the years. So 2020 did some wonders for Nintendo in the UK there. And as we knew before, Nintendo's consoles sold as much as PlayStation and Xbox consoles combined in the UK. Great numbers again, Nick. Animal Crossing. Yeah. (laughs) Pandemic, Animal Crossing, Mm -hmm. locked in. Perfect. Um. The Switch Lite is. It, it, I thought the Switch Lite would take off more because of the you know lockdown and and kids being away from school and maybe you know purchases like that. But the the kind of distribution between the Switch and the Switch Lite has kind of maintained its um, percentage of you know whatever it is like seventeen percent Switch Lite something like that. Uh, that stayed the same. Greg, it is the lockdown, yeah. Yeah, and I mean like the the standard Switch being like still sell more and stuff. It's like. It's the versatility of it, really. Like, if you have yeah. like more than one child, like you're obviously going to want the other one so that both people can play on the TV and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's numbers. true. Yeah, excellent. And we're going to move on to some download delights. Not much again this week, but something I'm very excited for. Apex Legends is out on the 9th of March, which is this Tuesday. I've been trying to clear um, Borderlands 2 before. I just can't quite do it. I've got one more pack of DLC to finish in Borderlands 2, and it's the last one called uh, Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary, which uh, leads up to Borderlands 3. Um, so I, 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 will I finish it off? Of course I will, but it um, it might take a little back step while I play Epic, Apex Legends and see what this free-to-download first-person Roy, Battle Royale shooter can live up to. Excited for that one, Greg? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nick? I'm not really that excited to play it, um, but I am excited to see how it runs on the Switch. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of people in another Discord who are massive Apex Legends fans, but they all play on uh, PC and Xbox, I think Xbox. Um, and I've played Titanfall 2 briefly on PC when I picked it up last year or a couple of years ago, very, very cheap. And I do like the game playing Titanfall 2, and I know that this is the same studio, so I am respawn yeah. willing to give it a go, maybe. Um, I definitely interested to see how it runs on the Switch though, uh, because on PC it's not available on Steam as far as I'm aware, and I've never bothered to like try and find out. How I'm not. To... Is it, was it just the Epic Game Store? No, because it? I think it's EA, isn't it? 
Apex Legends. Yes, you're right. Yeah, respawn here. Yes, yeah. it is here. So yeah. So I think it might only be available on Origin. Origin. Which I yeah. don't have, obviously. Um, <laughs> so yeah, interested to see how it runs on the Switch. Um, I, I know Cav on the forums is a big, big fan as well, isn't he? He's... Oh yeah, he's been <laughs> trying to push a few boys to mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> back him up in some games. But because it's got cross-platform play as well, it might mm-hmm. be worth just downloading on the Switch anyway, just to see it. Apparently, during the Japanese stream of a game, mm-hmm. when people looked at the, the the kind of frame rate, it seemed to be running at 60 frames a second. Subsequent videos later, though, because it's a good-looking game as well, from what I can see, subsequent videos, though, tend to, it looks like it's running at 30. So I, I, whether or not they're aiming for 60, and then it's a dynamic kind of frame per second or whether it's that locked 30 but to be honest even a locked 30 overwatch i've played a locked 30 it plays smoothly mm. smoothly enough to, we'll see, to, yeah. to warrant a first person shooting game i'll give you a look so we'll see uh three other games to look out for one is uh cyanide and happiness freak apocalypse which is an indie world showcase on the 11th of march 1599 that's thursday on Thursday as well is WRC 9 FIA World Rally Championship, the, the regular uh, update, yearly update of, they say, the leading off-road simulation franchise endorsed by the world's top drivers for forty four ninety nine there. And the big one, I think, on Friday, the 12th of March, Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Here's the discrepancy in uh, price here, Nick. Disgusting. Forty four ninety nine in the UK. And I... I Erroneously, I think said twenty nine ninety nine in the US before, but it's it is cheaper in the US at thirty nine ninety nine US dollars. I've never seen a game do that before. Activision can get bent. Not interested. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Forty four pounds ninety nine pence, Greg. No, it, not at that price. No chance. No, it's crazy. It's six crazy that it's cheaper it, in the yeah. US. What are they do? Why have they done that? I just I don't get I'm, it. Is it nostalgia for Crash Bandicoot? Possibly, possibly. Because in the UK, PlayStation, Crash Bandicoot, it does have quite a big pull, I think. But it's... I don't get it. Like, even if it was thirty four ninety nine, that I would have thought about it. But because it's like thirty nine ninety nine, but thirty four ninety nine is about the right price exactly. compared to other games. You know, when yeah. they're 50, 40 quid in uh, forty US dollars, it is that thirty five pounds yeah. in Britain. Then mm-hmm. why is it, t- is it ten pound? Extra weird, very weird. Not interested. Yes, I, I tell everybody interested in Crash Bandicoot Four. Just wait, give it six months, mm-hmm. you'll see a sale to a price that it should be. Give it a year, it'll be at the price that you want it to be. <laughs> um, there are some sales carrying on, and I, I suppose the the couple of shout outs a game i've been playing and really really liking actually i need to talk about this game on this podcast is x morph defense this is down to four pound 49 pence from 17.99 it mashes um, a twin stick top down shooter with slightly isometric with some tower defense elements and they both seamlessly work together very very good game that one um, the Red Lantern has seen its uh, slight reduction to £15 from £20. And then there's this um, mm, um, looks a lot better than it should. It's, the name of it is Mini Motor Racing X. And it, it just sounds like a, a cheap indie knockoff. But when you see it running and playing, it looks like micro machines. And you can basically either drive first person you're know, in the car or you can go at that overhead view as well, like micro machines is. And it's got a, it scales out quite a bit. It looks a very, very competent kind of micro machines clone. Therefore, it's been reduced from 17.99 down to 4.49. Anything interest you there, Greg? I'm afraid not. I don't really know in any of them. Looking through wow. the list, none of them. Nick, no, there's nothing there for me either. Sorry, <laughs> I, th- I used no I thought Bridge Constructs Paul. That was that's an old game. I think that's 2017. I was tempted yeah. by that for like physics sort of puzzle style game, but yeah, after watching a couple of videos back in the day, I, I kind of decided against it. So the others I've I've not heard of except the Red Lantern, but. I've got no interest in that, to be honest. It's still a bit too pricey as well at fourteen ninety nine. It's just just out of uh, out of range of what I would uh, want to pick it up for. But if you do want the full weekly Switch eShop downloads and sales information, check out the N Europe website where Dennis Tummers drops all the details on a weekly basis. 
Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a like if you've enjoyed our content. You can also check out our other great content on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and the Any Cafe podcast from all good podcast providers. Just follow the links in the description below.